Today, we will be going over the mounting of the transducers onto the massage table. And by camera operator Shin, Shin, show them who you are. Hello everyone, I'm Shin and I will be mounting the transducers because Pooh does not have an opposable thumb on his hand. That's right, but I am still pretty damn good at finding where the honey is. So, let's get on to mounting of the transducers. Can you tell everyone, Shin, what the mounting of the transducers is? I'd love to. Transducers are the parts that we mount onto the bottom of the massage table that transfer electrical energy into vibration. So basically, um, the sound that you would normally hear through like headphones or speakers is going to go through these. And as soon as these make contact with a the surface, they create vibrations. So if I just held this in the air, it wouldn't make any vibrations. It needs a surface like a massage table to make the vibrations. So they are called transducers. And there's two of these, uh, one for the left channel, one for the right. We have cable clamps and screws. Here are the clamps. Here are the screws for the cable clamps. There should be about three to four, depending on how many I've put in. And 20 of these small screws that go into the transducers. A package of E6000 glue, which will be used to hold the transducers in place. And the cable that runs from the transducers to a black box or to the control box directly. The parts you will need to supply yourself. A star head screwdriver or a Phillips head screwdriver. And if um, you prefer, you can use an electric drill with a star head screwdriver, a Phillips um, head on it. Parts you may need. Flat head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, maybe pliers like this, or staple remover if you have it. And Pooh, anything else you'd like to add? Just that I'm getting a big pot of honey after this. All right, let's get on to the mounting. Once you get your massage table upside down so the legs are sticking up in the air so you can work on it easier, uh, you're going to want to go through and pull off any paperwork that might be in the way. You're going to want to clean off any kind of Velcro that might get in your way, anything like that. Um, what we are looking for is to have the transducers in the middle of each section of the table. We're also paying attention to those push buttons that we spoke of earlier, and we're going to make them face the same way. Whether as you're mounting it, it's towards you or away from you, it doesn't matter. Just Make sure that those push buttons are facing on the same side. Next thing we're going to do is take a quick minute and look at our table. This particular table has nice deep cutouts that you can see here. So these cutouts allow us a lot more room. Some tables have it come out to here. So what we're going to do is quickly check to see the clearance. On this particular table, we need to fold half of it up to do that. So when you're working, initially, keep everything on one side of the table, leave the other side, the other playing field blank, just so you can fold your table halfway up. You have to do that in order to make room for your legs to move. Now what we're doing is we're just checking to see where this bar and all these other wood pieces are going to lay when this comes down. And we can see that 
we have enough room that we can just eyeball it like this and maybe you make a score mark with your pencil about where it is and you're keeping in mind where the center part is. If you need a ruler to make the center, you can. It doesn't have to be within inches. The vibrations are very low and they don't mind if this transducer is offset a little bit. So I fortunately have a little drill hole on either side of this, which tells me the center. One, two, three, four, five. That means the one in the middle, number three, is the center point. Once we find out what the center line is and you've marked this off, you're going to place the second transducer right on top of it. You're then going to close your table up again. And this time, you're going to close it all the way. And you're going to carefully look inside to see if you have room to close your table. If you do, you can keep your transducers stacked on top of each other. Meaning, when you go to mount, this transducer is going to be mounted up here and this one down here. So as it closes, this one is going to sit right on top of this one. If you don't have room, the one up here is going to be somewhere else. Maybe here, maybe further up. We want to try to keep it towards the middle if we can. On this particular unit, we are fortunate enough to mount them in the same spot. So we will start the mounting process now. So you're going to take that package of 20 screws and you're going to take your manual screwdriver or your electric one and screw those in. Now you need to make sure that you have an all wood deck. We put all the screws in to the transducers. If you accidentally screwed too hard and stripped out one of the screws, it's not a big deal. The glue that we sent you, the E6000, is a clear glue. And what we're doing is putting a dab on the screw head in between the screw and the body of the transducer. So basically what we're doing is locking the screw down with some glue to keep it from inadvertently backing out. Now, because these have a tremendous amount of vibration, we did use the screws as a part of the mechanical fastening. And we are also using the E6000 to go along the edge and you can have a nice thick bead between your transducer and the wood. You're going to have glue left over. Now the reason why we chose this glue is that in the future if you needed to take these off, you still can do that. So this glue is also going to help transfer the vibrations to the wood table. The next part is going to be the cable clamps and the cable. We're almost done with this, by the way. I told you it was easy and it's pretty straightforward. We're finding a good spot for the transducers. We're clearing out anything that might get in the way. We're making sure that we're keeping some of the air vents. If your table has an air vent like this one does, uh, you're not blocking it completely. You need a little bit of a room so that air can get back in and expand the foam, which is why we didn't cover that one. The cable is going to be facing towards wherever your handles are on your massage table. On, the, on your massage, massage table, if it's folding, you're going to have handles on one side and you're going to have rubber bumpers on the other. Uh, the rubber bumpers are where the massage table stands on the floor. So in this case, I'm going to want to where this starts to terminate and come out uh, with red and black cables is where we're going to put our first cable clamp. 
and the cable clamp just pops on and we are going to put this into the hard vertical part of the massage table. That's where the screwdriver comes in handy, the electric one. You can just place that cable right up, lay it on the floor of the massage table. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is something that's just going to get screwed in with one screw. We're going to take that shorter cable. We're going to find the red and we're going to find the black. The red goes to red, black goes to black. Push that in. Stick that cable all the way down so all that exposed wire gets a nice chunk of stuff there. This other cable is going to jump itself over to the other side and you're going to repeat the process. We have a few other cable clamps left over. We're going to take those cable clamps and we're just going to apply them right onto the part. It's about three inches away from the uh, transducer. And the reason why we're doing that is just to keep the cable in a nice neat area. And that is it for the installation. You can let it dry. It's going to take approximately an hour to fully cure. Uh, well, 24 hours to fully cure, but an hour before you can start moving it around. Final notes, the part of the cable that's coming off the massage table, once again, is going to get put into one of these two sockets on the black box. Black box goes up to the control box and gets plugged into that. When you get your uh, parts, um, you're going to find that there is a black box with a cable coming out of it. And this cable also has a right angle adapter. This adapter is going into the control box that gets mounted on top of the tripod. The black box is going to sit on the floor and we actually have a label that says place on floor away from foot traffic. Um, and essentially what's going to happen is this is the intermediary between the control box and the transducers which create vibration. Again, this goes to the control box. You're going to take this plug and either put it into low sound if you only want low vibrations. Let's say you're working in an area that has other people next door to you and you know you might want to be conscious of the vibrations that are coming out. Or if you're at home or it doesn't matter, you can do full sound. And what that's going to do is allow all the music to go through the transducers. Uh, we typically say play with it, whichever one feels good for you. And this is a twist lock. It works the same way as on the control box. You pull back, twist, and pull out. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed my dad's presentation on the transducer mounting. I worked really hard with him. I was sitting over there on the sidelines cheering him on. Go team go, yeah. Oh, he did such a good job. I love this. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to sit here and watch it dry because that's what we do. Watch it dry. Pooh, come on. Time for you to go to bed. Okay. Bye, everyone. Big love.